Hi everyone and a warm welcome to Fun of Flying. For those of you who followed my YouTube channel since I first started nearly a year ago, you'll be aware that I have dedicated a lot of time researching and producing videos related to the ever popular touch portal and Arduino desktop applications. Now as a result of this, uh, sadly, the one thing that I haven't done much of is actually flying an aircraft, which after all is what this channel is really all about. So today I'm going to do something different and that is to pilot a Zeebo 737-800X on a short flight from Las Vegas to Los Angeles. Now it probably goes without saying that I'm not a real world pilot but for a while now I have studied professional pilots on YouTube just to see how they do things and this in turn has given me a reasonable understanding of how to do it myself. Above all though, what I'm really interested in doing through this video is to demonstrate all of the procedures required for the flight overall from initially powering up the aircraft from a dark and cold state right the way through to landing and powering down on the arrival stand. Now many of you may know how to fly the Zeebo 737 already and may therefore be more experienced than me and that's fine but I'm almost certain that there will be quite a few simmers out there who are new to the aircraft and need a bit of help which in fact was me a few years ago at a time when frankly I needed all the help I could get. So for the expert and professional pilots out there in YouTube land if you have any constructive comments about this video then these are gratefully received otherwise I'll never learn from my mistakes. But for those of you who are new to flight simming and the Zeebo 737 aircraft in particular then my sincere hope and wish is that you gain some useful and positive information from this video that will in turn help you along your way. In the meantime though, for all my Touch Portal and Arduino fans don't worry as I have other videos covering these topics already lined up in the coming weeks and months. So anyway, here we are at what I understand is now called Harry Reid International Airport, although I suspect that many will still know it as McCarran International for many years to come. The plan now is to get on board and start preparing the aircraft for our short flight over to Los Angeles. Hi everyone and uh, welcome to the cockpit of our Zeebo 737-800X on this American Airlines flight from Vegas down to Los Angeles. A um, couple of things before we start. If you see my uh, mouse cursor here disappear off to the left like that, it's because I've got a, another monitor over to the left hand side of my main monitor here in my little man cave studio. And on that other monitor I've got various documents that I will show you throughout this video. Um, I'll just simply drag them onto here. Um, the first one of those I can go and get is our um, map of our route today. Um, if I connect that. Um, so this is uh, a desktop application from uh, Navigraph um, which is a, a pay for use service. Um, I think uh, to get the up to date charts and nav data from Navigraph it costs something like uh, uh, what, it, what would it be uh, 80 US dollars uh, 67 euro 60 U, uh, British pounds something along, along those lines and I'll, I'll put the description or the um, uh, website uh, details on in the description of the video so you can have a look for yourself um, so we're starting off here at Vegas on uh, runway uh, 26 right. We're taking the Radier to SID or Standard International Departure, which is that uh, pink line there. Then we go uh, uh, south and we follow this line cut through a couple of waypoints uh, called Black and Shatner. Reminds me of William Shatner every time I see that on this green line. And then we come down to, um, sorry, that's not the green line. The green line is the um, uh, standard terminal arrival, uh, which is Angel 4. And then we come down to the uh, last part, uh, heading towards Los Angeles on runway 25 left through the circus uh, transition. Okay, so that's that. Um, I also have 
a uh, operational flight plan that I'm going to be using like so and uh, I created this using the Simbrief website uh, Simbrief is actually now uh, been taken over by Navigraph so they're all sort of under one roof um, uh, to create an operational flight plan um, in the, from the Simbrief website uh, is currently free um, however now that they've been taken over by uh, Navigraph I'm not sure how long that will remain free but on here is all of the information uh, required to set up your uh, uh, flight plan in the flight management computer on board and uh, I'll be referring to this um, throughout the flight uh, we'll, we'll uh, get rid of that for now and the other thing I will be using is a checklist that I've created um, over time um, as you know I'm not a real world pilot so I've just studied what real world pilots actually do um, very closely and I've created this uh, checklist down here um, there is a checklist on board the Zebo aircraft which you can use as well um, but I'd prefer to stick to this one as I oh, know I'm not going to miss anything if I do okay so we'll put that away uh, for now and we'll come back here and the first thing we need to do is to have a look at our operational f uh, sorry our electronic uh, flight bag down here um, click on ground services and engage the uh, ground power unit and uh, if we have a look at the doors um, the main passenger door is already open uh, because we're connected to this uh, um, jetway bridge or whatever they call that there uh, but we do want the forward service door on the starboard side open um, to get some goodies on board and we want to put some cargo on board as well so we just open the cargo doors on the starboard side in addition to that okay uh, one thing I need to do before I forget um, because we're flying in the United States um, I need to change our calibration scale for weights um, from kilos to pounds so we go to this main menu page then go to page two of that and we click on configure and customize general config and then click on pounds instead of kilos okay I always forget to do that and then uh, then I wonder why the numbers on in my flight management computer don't don't uh, don't look right anyway so we come back uh, from there now we need to go to our um, overhead panel we've got the ground power unit connected we now need to um, bring power on board so we'll Put the battery on, emergency lights on, ground power on, seatbelt signs and no smoking signs on as well. Uh, we want our anti collision light on and we want our position light to steady. Apparently uh, this position light is always at steady when, you're, when the aircraft is stationary but as soon as it's moving it goes to strobe and steady. And we also want to uh, activate our voice recorder to pick up all the conversations on board prior to uh, the flight. Although it seems to me that uh, when once the engines have started, this switch will go back to the auto position automatically. Uh, you don't have to do it. Um, I've noticed that over recent flights. Okay, so having done that, uh, we then need to go to the panel above that to the IRS system which is the inertial reference system you click on or turn this knob here to heading um, status uh, and these two to nav and then we've got about seven minutes before the, before the IRS system aligns and uh, we can finish off putting information into our flight management computer okay so we'll let that uh, do its thing for the moment and we're going to go back to our 
electronic flight bag and we're going to start putting some payload information in so we click on fuel weight and balance and then payload um, we have no passengers and cargo on board yet so um, nothing will show there we'll do that in a minute um, then uh, well, I know from our operational flight plan that we want 12,000 pounds of fuel we've already got that however if there was uh, I'll show you I'll, I'll just click up here edit weights and balance so if I change this down to say 6,000 done apply now it's changed again so now we want 12,000 pounds of fuel so we click on that put in 12,000 pounds here enter you can see that there is a variance between what we need and what we have so you go to fuel here click on fuel Grab truck call and that will be taken care of without you having to do anything further so now we need to put some uh, configure the aircraft for some passengers uh, if we go down to page four or four here you, there are four different types of uh, configuration for this aircraft one for 160 passengers which is what we have 180 187 189 you can choose whichever of those you want and it will uh, also configure how many passengers per zone you can have as a maximum so 160 passengers is our limit so I'm going to come to this section here and start putting passenger numbers in now you can either go to click on each one of these and say let's say 11 there or well, 33 there you can either do it that way and by the way if you do click on the female side and you say 33 there it goes over here to the male side so I'm not exactly sure uh, what that's doing so you can you can enter these individually here these five zones up to these maximums or you can come down here and say right well I've got a capacity of 160 passengers we've only got 143 today and if you do put your 143 in and then click on packs and put this P in front of that and then enter it puts all your passengers passenger numbers in uh, wherever it thinks they should should go to balance the aircraft up okay so now we want a bit of uh, cargo on board so I'm just gonna have a nominal uh, 1500 pounds in, in forward and aft cargo areas uh, and that's that for the moment So now we've got our payload um, a zero zero fuel weight our fuel is still being put into the aircraft you can see this number gradually increasing increasing and then we've got our takeoff weight here 136 137,000 pounds and you'll need to refer to this a bit later on as will you need to refer to the center of gravity uh, when all this when all the passengers are on board and the fuel is on board okay so that's that for the moment um, what we need to do now is to uh, oh one thing I didn't do um, I didn't put the lights any uh, panel lights on so I'm going to dismiss that yoke and I go down here at least we'll be able to see what we're doing have a look over the co-pilot co side then the upper panel overhead panel and then the pedestal that would be much better to see what we're up to now so reinstate the yoke before I forget to do it get rid of those messages for now uh, back to the flight management computer so you click on FMC and then we want uh, position initialization anybody know what that is could be uh, so we're, our origin airport departure airport is KLAS which is the IC a to fuel is all loaded up and you are good to go. Okay, that's all our fuel on board. I'm doing RCAO. Okay, LAS there for Vegas. I never usually put any information in for gate. We will need to put a, a GPS position in here once the IRS system is aligned. We'll have to come back to that. Now we go to route. Uh, KLAS is still on the scratch pad down here because you need to enter it, it again up here 
I'm only doing a single route I'm not doing an alternate route today um, this is uh, as that just makes things a little bit more complicated to understand um, company route um, I'm not using today either um, but you can create routes save them into your company route folder within the explain folder structure and then type in the name of the file into here and you can bring that information so that it pre-populates some information as far as the routes concerned into this FMC it brings in the uh, departure airport the destination airport uh, and whatever waypoints there are uh, but I don't believe it brings in any SIDS and STARS we, which you have to do manually anyway we're going to do it the long way around um, we're not using the company route uh, for this trip so runway we're using uh, to leave Vegas is 26 right put that in there our destination is Los Angeles uh, and the ICAO code for that is KLAX which I'm sure many in the United States will be familiar with our flight number is American uh, 1500 there's our message to, message to say that the IRS system is aligned I'll come back to that in a minute I'll just finish this okay um, then um, once you've entered this information in you now need to put uh, uh, the uh, waypoints uh, in as required there's only two on this flight which is good so we go to the next page down here our first waypoint is uh, black Bravo Lima Alpha Quebec Quebec and put that in there sometimes your uh, operational flight plan will have um, airway numbers you can put them over here and then put your uh, waypoint on this side our other waypoint is uh, Shatner and we put that in there that's it okay, so we activate that execute next thing we need to do is to put our SIDS and STARS in uh, sorry if I click the right button so we go to departure from uh, Las Vegas our SID for this is uh, Radia 2 our transition point is black and we're going from runway 26 right so that's all good then we want to press this de uh, departure arrival button again and we want to go over here to our arrival uh, for Los Angeles click on that we know from our flight plan that we want to the Angel 4 star click on that uh, the waypoint that we need is Shatner for some reason I don't know why but it takes two attempts to select this um, we also want uh, runway 25 left and we want the circus uh, transition point execute um, okay so that's as far as we can go on there for the moment the next thing we'll need to do is this performance initialization uh, which, which we can do shortly once we've finished uh, putting our uh, information into our electronic flight bag so let's go back to that okay so we need to remember a couple of numbers but my memory is not very good these days but uh, we need to remember uh, takeoff weight and uh, center of gravity so let's try and do this uh, 136971 136971 and we go to performance takeoff we put 13697 one I think it was in there and the C of G oh, I could never remember what was it 23.9 23.9 20 and that's that then you click in this um, this information has been picked up from the flight management computer so uh, departure airport uh, and you click in here uh, and to and scroll through until you find your uh, takeoff runway which is 26 right uh, you come down here put some wind information in we've got a nice southerly uh, light breeze at 10, 10 knots like that and that's it for that page 
now we go back and now we're going to need another bit of information from payload and we want uh, page 3 and we want landing weight uh, which is 125471 and put that in a performance landing 125471 put that in there then you just click in here for to, to find the right runway for our arrival at Kalax Los Angeles which was 27 uh, 25 left so to speak sorry then we put our wind in which is still southerly a little bit breezier than it was and that's that bit done and we can come right out of that that's all set up you don't need to do anything further okay so now we go back to our flight management computer and we can start putting some information in here now now to get your uh, gross weight you just click on this button here and there it is 137 and a half thousand pounds our fuel for the journey is t uh, 12,000 pounds which we've already got because we put that in before our reserves um, that is a, a reserve amount of fuel for any particular uh, reason we might need it is 2400 pounds uh, which is uh, expressed as 2.4 in there we know from our operational flight plan that the cost index is 7 uh, our cruising altitude is 30,000 feet which is expressed anything above 10,000 feet is expressed as a flight level um, so it's flight level 300 goes up there our wind cruising wind uh, is 180 southerly still a bit stronger at 45 our ISA deviation is 3 uh, our transition altitude in the United States is 18,000 feet in um, UK I think it's, I don't know, it's uh, uh, 7,000 feet 6,000 something like that uh, I was flying in France the other day and it was 5,000 feet and the transition altitude is where you set your altimeter or the barometer for your altimeter to standard when you're climbing or to the given um, barometer reading when you're descending uh, to below 18,000 feet so execute that and we can go to M1 limit um, you can actually put a temperature in here I'm not sure of the how this works exactly but if you want to derate your engines on takeoff to something like I don't know 95 or 90 90% you can uh, put a, a high um, temperature figure in here for say 55 degrees and it somehow derates the engines but uh, we're not going to do that today go to the next page which is a, a, a takeoff reference uh, we want um, five degrees of flaps for takeoff our C of G is 23.9 our trim required is 4.75 so if we go to the trim wheel it's on five at the moment so I'll just adjust that um, then we uh, click on each of these to get our V1, VR and V2 uh, takeoff speeds 143 knots if I remember that uh, shortly and then while I'm here I just zip over to the um, co-pilot side click on FMC and then index and then approach and that information there is some information that you need to note and there's, a, there's one bit of information that you need to put in and that's the uh, flaps um, with a five uh, knot adjustment uh, for wind so um, ordinarily we've got four, 40 degree flaps and, a, and a, a, a landing speed of 138 knots so we need to add five to that which makes it 143 so we put 40 one four three in there and that's our VREF taken into consideration our wind corrections so down here we've got on this side we've got our uh, nav radio frequency for the um, ILS at Los Angeles runway 25 left and our runway heading here which 
is something you need to refer to later but on this 109.9 frequency we can quickly check uh, on our pedestal down here um, fortunately for me it's already set up uh, courtesy of a flight I took the other day um, but if um, you need to change that you come over to here change the uh, that's the kilohertz frequency and this is your megahertz frequency over here you can change it and press on press this button over here it's in the middle and it moves one frequency from standby to active uh, we want 109.9 so we'll put that back it's the same over this side and generally while I'm here I set up um, uh, my transponder squawk code uh, which is 4747 like so done okay and we we'll leave that on standby um, for the moment now just bear with me I'm just going to check my checklist make sure I've done everything so we've gone through all of that down there we've put our information into the electronic flight book we've put our information into the FMC checked our trim wheel setting now we can go over to the Sunvisor console to do uh, uh, to finish that off okay so Sunvisor console now one thing that uh, I always get a, into a habit of doing is checking our uh, route for any discontinuities um, otherwise we could end up with problems so we go over here onto this knob and, and select plan like so and this magenta line down here is our routing so what I do here is click on legs select legs there and these are all of the various waypoints throughout the entire flight and there's this button here called step and you just click on that and it will take you through your route and what we're hoping not to see is any gaps in any of this line this magenta line looks good so far yeah that looks fine and you step through until you get back to your first page which is back at Las Vegas so that all looks good um, so we'll just put this back to map and finish with that now we're going to put some information in up here so our um, runway heading at Vegas is uh, 259 uh, 259 like so two oh wait two five nine now I'm not entirely sure whether you have to do all three of these heading buttons I suspect not I think as long as you've done that one um, I've seen real world pilots do set these up with other headings and that's because they know far more about how to fly this aircraft than me um, but I, I generally get into a habit of doing that um, so then if you remember our takeoff speed v2 was 143 knots so you select that there our cruising altitude was uh, or is uh, 30,000 feet now real world pilots would be vectored up to their cruising altitude um, and they would probably start this off at something like 6,000 6, feet or whatever the air, air traffic control gives them um, but we're not working with air traffic control today so I'm simply going to put our cruise altitude straight into here 30,000 and while we're talking about altitudes I go to the overhead panel and make sure from a point of view of oxygen supply to the uh, aircraft uh, we've got the right uh, cruise altitude in here and this is the landing altitude at uh, Los Angeles so that's that's all set that's good happy with that okay so we've done all of that uh, then we can turn on our flight directors and our auto throttle and then I generally try I click on the 
the oh because I haven't done the uh, IRS yet hang on I knew I'd forget that so we want to get uh, this populated here you've got to get your GPS position but where do you get it from if you click on next page uh, these are the uh, GPS coordinates of where you are these are both the same but they come from the IRS system just click on one of those go back here and put it in there and that uh, should be enough and it, it's placed it up there as well so now we go back up here we should click on these and they should, these little bars should come up which they have I'm pleased to say now uh, you can either leave those on nothing will happen um, until you press the command uh, button here to engage your autopilot um, um, I'd, I'd, I'll put them on later I think um, I'm not sure quite what the process is for that I've seen real world pilots uh, put them on um, shortly after takeoff so we'll leave them at that uh, for the moment now um, we go back to our electronic flight bag again and what I'm going to do is to start loading passengers and believe you and me it doesn't take any any time at all which I'm pleased to uh, pleased to see and whilst that's going on I come back up here and we start uh, switching on uh, the APU to get uh, some internal power up and running uh, so I put these uh, to battery and APU gen so you can see the voltages from the battery and from the APU itself come down here uh, select one of the aft fuel pumps and then switch the APU on like so and then we have to wait for it to spool up and uh, this is a, a exhaust gas temperature from the APU and shortly it will go around to 800 degrees and then back to 400 degrees and when it does um, this blue light will come on to say that the APU is ready to be brought online so there's the uh, needle going around up to about 800 while it's doing that I'm just going to put on the window heats uh, switches here Right, this doesn't take long at all. Okay, it's going back down to about 400 degrees. Wait for it. Now, oh, blue lights come on, so the power is now available from the APU, so we select that. Click on these two here. That one tends to stick, I don't know why. Okay, so now we can put our trim air on. Uh, left and right air conditioning packs and the APU bleed you should hear the fans start running yep there we go uh, we can turn off uh, ground power go to the electronic flight bag ground services and disconnect okay so um, I think passengers are all on board now so we can go ahead and uh, remove our chocks and close uh, the doors they must be on board because the uh, cabin crew has shut uh, the forward entry door okay so that's that bit done to for the moment so we'll just uh, move on to the next phase okay so we'll just have a look at our uh, checklist again um, where did we get to so we are down to here the passengers are all on board we need to check the doors are shut uh, and then start to uh, um, put in some switches on on the overhead panel so I'll just get rid of that we'll go shift and six shift and six and we can just have a look out here right the jetway is moved back the doors are shut the doors are shut and so are the cargo doors so that's good so now we can uh, start uh, putting some other 
switches on up here so we want our uh, yaw damper I think a uh, real well pilot will know when, when that is required um, then we come down here we want the rest of our fuel pumps on uh, nothing down here for the moment APU still on uh, ground power is off yeah that's good uh, we want our hydraulic pumps on uh, it's not cold enough for ice protection there but we'll have our pito heat on voice recorder still on uh, trim air is on all of this is good for now uh, we don't need any other lights on at the moment okay uh, checklist once more so that's all done uh, oh yeah okay so now we need to uh, get our pushback arranged and uh, start the engines on pushback I'm just going to check our doors again because it wouldn't be the first time that I've flown with the doors open okay right back to the electronic flight bag uh, we got this uh, better pushback app, uh, plug-in which is very useful we'll pre-plan our pushback and at the moment it's going from here to here which is fine so we'll just uh, send click on uh, enter ground to cockpit plan acknowledged call me through the menu when you are ready and we are ready so we'll select uh, request pushback ground to cockpit tow is driving up and we'll wait for the tow wagon to turn up which usually drives through a building or something we'll see what it does today no sign of it at the moment not already there is it oh there it is yeah comes out the building as usual one day they might get that sorted out Right, so we need to wait for the uh, crew, uh, the ground crew to connect up and then they're going to ask us to release the parking brake so that they can commence with the pushback. And whilst they're doing that, they'll also... Okay, uh, all doors and hatches are closed, ready yeah. to connect. Next message, they'll be asking for the parking brake to be released and then they'll say it's uh, okay to start the engines. So speak amongst yourselves for the moment. See the nose of the aircraft lifting as the uh, hydraulics on the uh, pushback tug. So connected and bypass been inserted. Release parking brake. Okay, so release parking brake. As soon as we've done that. Starting pushback. And you may start engines. Okay, now to start the engines, first thing you need to do is to turn off these air conditioning packs. Otherwise, there won't be enough compressed air available to spool the engines up. So we've got ignition starter to the right engine first, starboard engine and put this switch to ground and then we are looking at this N2 gauge here and we want once that gets to about 24% or say 22 to 24% we can introduce fuel to the engine through this uh, fuel idle stroke cutout lever. Right. So, okay, so that's now going to spool up to about 58%. Let me go back to the overhead panel, and once that engine has spooled up and stabilised, this knob will go back to the off position. Like so. Then we move this over here to the left hand side for the port engine, put that to ground. And do the same thing again watching that gauge there sixty eight 
15, 17, 18, 19, that should be enough. Engage fuel. I don't know whether your mouse does this, but sometimes I will lift that lever there, then move my cat mouse cursor away, and it drags the lever back down again. It's almost as though the mouse is catching on things. It's, it's not the only thing it does it on as well. Not sure why. Okay, so uh, that's now gone back to the off position. So the next thing we need to do is to engage the uh, engine generators. Like so. Switch off the APU. Don't need that now. Uh, put the air conditioning packs back on isolation valve to auto uh, APU bleed off and then we're just going to wait for the uh, pushback crew to tell us when it's okay to put the parking brake back on and then we can uh, get the aircraft ready for a taxi roll operation complete set parking brake there we go parking brake on Disconnecting to stand by. Whilst, whilst these guys are working, don't be tempted to switch on any of these lights here because they get rather annoyed and they tell you to stop blinding them. Certainly don't do it until the message comes up to to say uh, the disconnect is complete or you're acknowledging the disconnect. Yeah, that's that. Wait for their further broadcast. Always disconnected. I'm yep. Mike and has been removed. Hand signal on the left. We'll see you next time and have a good flight. Thank you, guys. All right, so uh, we'll well light on. Uh, I'm not putting wing lights on. Um, Maybe I will. Yeah. Logo light. Oh, let's put them all on. And then we put this uh, position light to strobe and steady. You can do that with a mouse. Okay, the cabin there we is are. secured. Have a good flight. Um, we want our taxi lights on. We want our runway turn off lights on. Okay, I think that's that for now. We'll review our checklist. Okay, um, yeah. Lights are on. Now we need to uh, set our flaps to five degrees for takeoff and set the auto brake to rejected takeoff. So we'll go to here first. It's a bit fiddly doing this. I I normally have it on my uh, joystick. Is that good enough? check the gauge there is, that's the flaps gauge going up see where it settles down <coughs> we want to put this to reject it takeoff those flaps are um, going a bit too far on 10 I think that's it that should be 5 yep that's good Right, so now we're ready for our uh, for our taxi roll. So release our parking brake uh, engines to. I usually try to put them about 25% in one, and then we'll centralise ourselves on the line here. engine thrust and from watching the real world pilots if they if you get that orange uh, yellow and black line in line with the uh, fire warning and master caution buttons you're more or less over it over the line yes 
the rudder control or my hot ass joystick is very very sensitive runway 26 right is immediately ahead of us going from left to right uh, so we'll just make our way across uh, around to the uh, holding point sharp turn to the left coming up a little bit of brakes slow things down a bit Turn. That's right, no major dramas there. Holding point is just up ahead and uh, around to the uh, right hand side of this taxiway some speed around this tight corner Get back on the centre line ok so we're going to hold short here uh, parking brake on and we go to the overhead panel now we want our runway lights on, uh, landing lights on, sorry. We'll leave those on and turn our taxi lights off. Uh, we'll leave these on for the moment. We need to set our engine starts switches to continuous. I'm not sure quite what to do with this starter switch in the middle, but I generally put it in the centre for both engines. Uh, if the cabin crew bit of notification that we're about to take off um, we need to uh, go down here and set our transponder to TARA so we don't get the uh, TCAS message appear down here um, and then the last thing we need to do is to make sure that we set the timer on the uh, chronometer here I always forget that try not to this time ok we'll set it now like so and we'll release our brakes and we'll make our way onto the runway approaching 2, 6, right center ourselves up properly on runway two six right yeah, the white arrows on this runway are not exactly lined up properly themselves 
Okay, so we're ready, uh, we've got clearance to take off, so we're going to put our throttles to about uh, 40 something percent N1 and then engage the uh, toga button. Right, 
back to monitoring. Uh, 1856 to the top of the climb. Yeah, we've got 10 minutes to go. Um, but in the meantime, we will get to an altitude of 18,000 feet, which is our transition altitude. Uh, at which time I need to set the altimeter to standard. In Europe, as I think I said, that altitude is a lot lower than 18,000 feet. It's almost as though you've got to uh, set the transition to standard almost within five minutes of taking off because you do reach 5,000 or 6,000 feet uh, pretty quickly. In fact, I saw a real world pilot um, do a YouTube video and that's exactly what he did or he said his company does that uh, as a part of their procedures to 18,000 feet uh, this uh, barometer setting here which is um, it's, all, it's all in x -plane, it's always 2.9.2 uh, unless you're using um, some sort of real weather um, app with, your, with x -plane. so that's now turned to uh, orange and we set uh, we uh, press the standard button here and it's gone to green and it's now uh, got standard written there that's that bit. There's nothing really much else to do now until uh, we get up to our uh, cruising altitude of 30,000 feet. Coming up to uh, one of our main waypoints, uh, Black, Bravo Lima, Alpha, Quebec, Quebec. Uh, which you can see here. Going up to 22,000 feet now. Uh, top of climb estimated at uh, 1856, which is about five minutes, five minutes away. And you'll see a, uh, a little green uh, T stroke C uh, message appear on this uh, uh, display panel.
coming up to our other main waypoint now, Shatner. Just here. usually takes about 15 minutes to get up to the uh, cruising altitude from takeoff. Um, obviously depends on what your cruising altitude is, but 30,000 feet should be doable in 15 minutes. Um, or 20 minutes if, you, if the cruising altitude is significantly higher than that. And we're just over 26, uh, about 26 and a half thousand feet. And we have uh, three minutes left which will take us to 16 that's not too bad <coughs> excuse me <coughs> Quick look and see how we're doing on our route today. And here we are. Uh, all of that green line is our start into Los Angeles, Angel 4. So we've uh, probably coming up for, well, it won't be long before we're halfway through our route. There's our top of climb message here and when that uh, green arc gets down to here uh, we will be at 30,000 feet thousand to go thousand to go to our electronic light bag and go to PA and uh, let passengers know we're in our leveling off position. Uh, I'm not inclined to switch off the seatbelt signs because uh, of COVID and we'll leave that uh, as it is for the moment. Now check on our progress again. Uh, we've got Estimated time of our top of descent point is 1904, which is uh, seven minutes away. And we're not going to be at our cruising altitude for very long. And one thing we need to do before we uh, start this, uh, before we get to our top of descent point, is change this altitude. Now again if you're working with ATC you get vectored down to various altitudes to your destination airport um, but we are uh, not using ATC as I said so I'm going to vector ourselves down to the um, fly slope 
uh, altitude platform, approach platform, which is 1900 feet at Los Angeles. Was set 1900. Now, if you don't do something with this altitude, by the time you've reached your top of descent point, uh, if you don't change it from 30,000, then the aircraft will stay at 30,000 feet and will not descend and it will not follow the uh, um, uh, VNAV profile set into your computer. Uh, so if you go sailing by your top of descent point, then you will have to manually uh, decrease your altitude, firstly by t uh, turning this knob to a lower altitude, and then uh, I think you have to do uh, level change and, until you've, till such times as you picked up your uh, VNAV profile again on your um, flight management computer. So anyway, that's where we're aiming for once we start our uh, descent. Uh, we need to change our runway headings for uh, 26, uh, 25 left at Los Angeles, 251, like so. Uh, and we'll just leave that as it is for now. And we'll monitor what's going on. Uh, we've got uh, 1903, if I can read that properly, 1903, uh, so in four minutes time uh, we will start our uh, descent. Here's our top of descent uh, marker. It's about uh, 10 kilometers away, 10 nautical miles away, I should say. Not kilometers. I don't know if that's 10. Well, that's 5, so it's just coming down to 5 nautical miles now. But when that T stroke D top of descent marker gets down to here, um, and courtesy of the fact that we have reduced the altitude from 30,000 feet um, will allow the aircraft to follow its uh, vertical descent profile as programmed in the FMC. There we go, engines rolling back we have started our descent. Let the passengers know. <coughs> now, a bit of information here um, that might be useful to you. Um, this number here is the indicated airspeed as, prog as programmed by the computer, and this magenta pointer equates to that number. So on that scale, that magenta pointer, and we've got to, to put some uh, our spoilers out to uh, give some drag to the aircraft, uh, because as I was about to say, um, if there is a difference, if this magenta pointer starts going down here, courtesy of the flight management computer, but that number there doesn't start decreasing, um, then you're likely to be over speeding very quickly. So, but now we can see that that magenta pointer is 
coming up more in line with that because those are the 267 and, and this number here now 267 are equal so we can um, uh, we can uh, put the um, spoilers back down again but always keep an eye on this if you see that magenta pointer drift down here but this number doesn't decrease at the same time then uh, just give oh, that's my mouse sticking again to that uh, lever um, just give it just put out the uh, spoilers or speed brakes uh, for a little while until these two equal up and I always uh, when I'm flying I always have the uh, camera pointing at this angle so that I can see all of the instruments rather than this angle which I would use for landing or taking off if you if you have it up here you can't see any messages come up on the fl flight management computer telling you to um, telling you that drag is required so just keep an eye out or if you can hear a little audible ding uh, and you can get a little message come up here say drag required then deploy the speed brakes uh, sometimes you hear that uh, little ding noise audible warning and it's nothing to do with anything here it's, the, it's what's going on in the cabin behind but always have a view so you can see any messages come up here okay so uh, to end destination is 1919 Zulu 1919 so we've got 13 minutes it's not long at all when we get down to uh, to our transition altitude of 18,000 feet then I'll uh, return the altimeter back to So we're coming down to our transition altitude now of 18,000 feet, at which point that standard message, <coughs> excuse me, frog in the throat, uh, will turn orange and then we need to uh, reset the altimeter accordingly. There you go. So we just press this knob here, and it goes back to 2992. Um, and as I said before, if you're following ATC instructions or uh, you have real weather uh, apps in your, your copy of X-Plane then you'll be working with uh, 
probably more accurate uh, barometer settings here. times when you're in your descent always keep an eye on this here and this number because that might go to something like 240 very soon courtesy of the flight management computer and when it does uh, as we said before you might find this magenta pointer go down here but your airspeed not reduce accordingly because you're in a descent so just watch these two here and keep an eye on them because you may need to deploy uh, the speed brakes as I said and it, you, you may have to do that even though there's not a message come up here so you might want to sort of get ahead of the game and deploy the spoilers or speed brakes uh, yourself rather than wait for a message Nine minutes to our uh, destination airport at uh, 10,000 feet. I should put uh, the landing lights on. Put our landing lights on and then we better get back to monitoring the altitude. Never quite sure whether to, oh excuse the dog, never quite sure whether to put the runway lights on now. We'll have a look at that. I'll do that anyway. Um, I need to go back to have a look at, see what's going on here. You can see that this uh, magenta pointer is reducing down because the speed from the flight management computer is uh, reducing. So we'll uh, deploy our speed brakes. <coughs> That's it, the speed is dropping nicely. Put them away now. And uh, I think we'll prepare the aircraft, give a heads up to the crew. The airport is up there somewhere. Oh, 
we'll just have a look at where we are so we're just on our final final approach here so we'll put on the uh, we'll select the, pro the approach button make sure our ILS frequency is correct 109.9 yes um, first thing that will happen is that uh, VOR stroke lock will go green to say that we're on the localizer and then after that the glide slope will turn green to say we're on the glide slope and we'll set our engines wrong way to uh, continuous and we'll have our auto brake set to we are 13 nautical miles from the airport so I'm going to start slowing the aircraft down a bit because it's a bit difficult to rely on the uh, FMC to do it for you sometimes right so VOR uh, stroke lock we're, we're on the um, on the localizer now we're going to deploy the speed brakes just to slow the aircraft down see the runway at the moment it's behind that cloud <coughs> these little pink markers here are to tell you where you are in reference to the localizer and the glide slope and we're not on the glide slope yet but when we are that pink one there should be in the middle and that pink one should be in the middle there and uh, the aircraft will follow those, follow that all the way down until you disengage the autopilot, in which case you need to make sure that they are where they're supposed to be. So we're seven nautical miles away. I'm going to reduce, reduce the speed to 200. Just pretend that we're working with ATC. Speed brakes are still on. Slow us down. Keeping an eye on this here, that puts it up, and then these are the increments to show you when, when the flaps should be uh, deployed. And I'm going to uh, go to flaps one now. <coughs> now, one of the things you're supposed to do is to arm the speed brakes for landing, so put it to that position out of its little detent and then up and over the gate and then you get the speed brakes armed warning come up there you might still need this though so when you finish with it if you if you have to deploy the speed brakes again to slow the aircraft down um, we need to keep an eye on what we're doing here so landing gear down it's a bit late with all of that I'm afraid that's why I'm not a pilot so we'll get the speed down deploy the speed brakes again and we're going to go flaps 5 already I've been too busy chatting and not keeping an eye on what's going on so we need to slow this aircraft down quickly we're on the glide slope now those pink markers are where they should be. That's guidance for you following, uh, following the glide slope down to the uh, runway. We're at uh, unit 155 and I'm going to put in flaps 15. Yeah, aircraft is slowing nicely. Gears down. 
Um, we're going to get it stabilised at our approach speed of 143. Flaps 20. Get the aircraft stabilised. Not far to go. We're at 3,000 feet still. Four, three, I'm going to put full flaps. And leave the autopilot, uh, the auto throttle, and the autopilot on for now until we get down to about a thousand feet and disengage both. Twenty-five for a manual landing. How was our progress? Yeah. Heading in the right direction. <coughs> Aircraft is stable. Uh, not being a real pilot I have uh, got the aircraft into a stable position well ahead of time uh, and probably sooner than I should have but uh, I'm gonna leave it on that view for now ready for landing seventeen hundred feet get a bit closer we can see the pappy lights of the airport they're, they're very difficult to see I have good eyesight which I unfortunately don't have we'll be disengaging the autopilot one thousand thousand feet stabilised turn off the auto throttle approaching two five left try and keep control of this now Trying to watch those little pink character, those little pink markers in the uh, primary display. We don't want to get too low. We don't want to go too high. We're too low at the moment. And let's get down a bit. Too high again. Three hundred. Landing, I'm afraid. 50, 40, 30, 20, 10. 20, 10. We bounce. Check in a minute. Reverse thrusters. And you're braking. Months. First thrusters off. We exit the runway. A little bit off centre there. Okay, that's good. I'm pleased with that. That's probably better than most of my landings. At least we all got down safely. I'm just wait here. Till we get permission to move on. 
parking brake on. Uh, we may need the uh, APU uh, when we get to the stand. And our taxi lights on, landing lights off. And leave those on. Turn that off, get our flaps down. And get our spoilers down as well. Make a move back to the terminal. Obviously, we wouldn't have stopped at that. Uh, at that point for, for that long because the co-pilot will have done most of that work but as we're flying single-handedly um, I have to do everything and so will you when you fly this lovely aircraft okay we've got permission to cross this runway approaching zero seven left Straighten up a bit and slow down. Now comes the difficult part, and that's actually finding a, um, a vacant stand. Hopefully, you can without too much trouble. Being a bit careless with my steering on on the apron here. Looks like a vacant uh, stand over there. We'll make our way over to that. Right. Let's have a quick look. Yeah, okay, I think we're good. Not the best bit of taxiing. I think this is where VR would help. So you can see around the cockpit without any difficulty at all. You can see out the side windows just by a quick glance. That's probably nowhere near centre. Brakes on. Engage the APU. APU lead. And I think we should be able to switch our engines off. Turn our runway lights, runway uh, turn off lights off. Taxi lights, and put this to steady. Leave the anti collision light as it is. Turn the uh, seat belts signs off. Start shutting everything down. 
put that back that back to a hundred I don't know where that I don't know if that starts at 2000 uh, turn off uh, the flight directors it's off okay your damper your damper off uh, turn off the fuel pumps bar one of the aft ones for the ATU that's all off I'll leave that as it is we'll have ground power connected shortly I'm sure Need those that looks all right uh, don't need hydraulic pumps on I don't think anymore Veto heat can go off window heat can go off isolation valve to on uh, I think that's about it for now Go to our electronic flight bag, uh, ground services, we can connect up the GPU, set the chocks. Um, we haven't got a jetway here, or well, we have, but it's not engaged, so we'll have to uh, deploy the air stairs, like so. Um, Initial reference, put that back. Uh, index, ident, and start again. And I think that's it. Welcome to Los Angeles. So then, that was my first attempt to record, narrate, edit, and produce a video of me, a single handed pilot flying a complicated aircraft that's really designed for two pilots but I think I managed reasonably well okay there were no doubt a few things that I missed or even did wrong completely and I'm sure that I'll get feedback on those in due course for the moment though if I have shown just a few new simmers how to fly this lovely aircraft then my job here is done consequently if you found the video of interest then please smash the like button and of course, if you have any questions, please let me know and I'll try to help you as best I can. In either event, don't forget to click the subscribe button and the bell just so that you don't miss any other videos in future. Thanks again for watching and ta-ta for now.